Let's get some more now with Dr. Stephen Nash from Fig Securities, focusing on Australia first, if we could. Um, Stephen, and I just wanted to ask you, I mean, uh, the case for a cut, what do you think? I mean, did that job start yesterday just to support that argument? I think the RBA has been concerned about the labour market for quite a while. They've been noticing a gradual decline in the labour market. It's, it's uh, not a dramatic one. However, they are concerned about the transition from mining uh, uh, employment to more construction-based investment. They're, they're trying to make that transi transition as smooth as possible and um, we also do have some fiscal contraction coming through. Uh, it's likely that we may even get more uh, fiscal contraction than we've got already uh, given uh, the decline in the mining sector and uh, for private forecasts of uh, a deficit next year. So. We already have some fiscal tightening built in, there may be even further or more of that coming, so it's quite reasonable to expect the completion, I think, of the recent bout of easings uh, today. I think what's really important with regard to the statement will be what is the outlook for further cuts, and I think the RBA may indicate uh, that at this point there's probably not much of a case for further cuts. Okay, so uh, looking at inflation, that, that side of things as well, I mean, we were just mm. hearing from Paul Bloxham before that, yep. you know, yeah, there was a hotter than expected read in September quarter, but it's still at the lower end of the RBA's target range. So does that just add to the case then for the RBA to be able to cut today? Well, I think broadly it, it does. I think the uh, higher than expected core readings are somewhat of a concern for the RBA. The RBA will probably elaborate a lot more on Friday about its... Um, thinking on uh, the CPI and the effects of the, the carbon price, uh, pro possible secondary uh, pass-through of that into the broader price structure. So uh, I think there's got to be a, a period of evaluation and I think uh, the next few months will allow the RBA to, to uh, have a look more in more detail about the carbon price and the possible uh, elevation of core CPI readings from that. That's, I don't think, a constraint in the RBA right now. I think the RBA board are very concerned about the effect of the high Australian dollar on exporters. Uh, the problem will be, of course, if the RBA do indicate that uh, there probably won't be any more cuts for a while, the, the Australian dollar might uh, appreciate quite a bit on the back of that. So I guess, you know, looking then at, uh, at uh, the European situation as mm. well, um, what do you think, I mean, could that be something that the RBA has in the back of its mind, given, you know, there is some concerns that Greece may be heading bankruptcy this month? Uh, look, uh, Europe is, uh, has been a, a risk that the RBA has flagged for quite a while. I, I don't think that the RBA will be putting that in the mix right now, but that is something that could really get uh, rates a lot lower than they are now. If, uh, if Europe was to come unstuck, as they say, uh, we've got the Greek situation boiling away in the background. We've got uh, Spanish unemployment released last night. Uh, again, very, very elevated. Uh, a lot of popular uh, unrest with regard to austerity measures. I think Europe broadly has to get, go into the second stage. Now, once the, the budgets have been put in place, I think there's got to be more pro-growth policies in Europe, and I think uh, we'll possibly see more of those towards the end of the year. Those Spanish bond yields too, I mean, are they sort of getting back towards levels where, you know, there, there has got to be some action? Well, not yet, but they're, 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 standing, they're starting to move up again. Uh, Portuguese yields again are starting to move up. Uh, we're, we're not in a situation where it's really a threat to Spanish growth at this point, but I think the market at it's, it's some uh, point will take on the, the ECB. The ECB have uh, basically manipulated prices or, or, or affected expectations substantially and uh, they've been very successful without actually uh, intervening in the market. So uh, I think the, um, the market wants to see what the ECB will do and whether the ECB will be able to uh, hold yields where they are. Um, uh, looking at, at European unemployment too, I mm. mean we've just got confirmation of just how tough things are in the region. Yeah, I think the, the, the revolt against uh, austerity measures is growing, the popular uh, support for that is growing, the Berlusconi threats of um, not supporting Monty going forward is, is a concern and symptomatic of the southern European problems right now and I think uh, there's got to be a moderation of the German stance and I think we're already seeing some of that already uh, in some of the releases from the Germans. So. Uh, going forward, I imagine that uh, 
there will be a, a softening of the stance from Germany as, as Germany is going to feel the effects of the, the uh, quite large European recession in terms of its rating. I think core European countries, particularly France, are on, uh, on the possible uh, rating downgrade outlook and I think that uh, you know, the, the faltering European economy is quite, uh, quite bad for these uh, core European countries, particularly France. Um, just turning to the US, and mm. we'll ask you about the election in a second, but I did just want to ask you, I mean, we did see Apple trade below that 200-day moving average, and it yeah. seemed to accelerate the selling, although it's obviously done well overnight. Yeah. Um, what do you think? I mean, is that, for you, just indicative of the whole earnings season in the US and what's going on with, with corporates there? Well, if you look at the trading history of Apple, it's quite interesting. Uh, the last time Apple went through the 200-day moving average was really when it was going sideways, uh, but uh, we've had an acceleration on, on the downside of late from a very elevated level with Apple. Uh, technically, if Apple remains below that um, 200 day moving average, it's quite poor for momentum trading in the US. Apple now uh, being seen as one of the key momentum uh, stocks in the US. I think it's an indicator that it's very helpful to, to get a broad guide on what's going on in um, US equities. I think the problem for US equities will be uh, with the elections a realization that uh, a gridlocked political system won't be very positive for the fiscal cliff and may bring forward uh, concerns about that. Uh, so I think that's a major concern for the US market uh, in the next few days. Yeah, there's a lot to watch out for, isn't there? And I guess uh, most importantly, we've got to get your thoughts on which horse will win the, the Melbourne Cup today. I think uh, uh, the, the one I'm going for is uh, Mount Athos. I think uh, other people are going for that as well. So hopefully uh, we can uh, get a good result there. And what, that, the, the whole Greek uh, influence in the name there, you know, what, would, would that sort of give you some, some hope then that the, the Greece situation will also be sorted out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Thanks so much. much for that, Stephen. Okay.